I had a conversation with a guy some time ago now that I'm going to share with you here in video format. This story may sound familiar to some of you watching, and you'll know why once you make the connection. I'm going to change the name to Dan. My son's name is Daniel, so there's a pretty neutral name there, Dan. To protect this guy's identity, I don't think he would care so much if I were to come on here and, and tell this story. Uh, he wouldn't want to be associated with certain groups of people who will hear this story, though, and you'll understand why by the end of the story. He's already had a very close call with a member of aforementioned group. Uh, I met Dan through a group, uh, through a group of friends, got to know him somewhat well. Uh, we got to the point, I guess, you know, common, uh, American societal, cultural permission type thing. By the third time we got together and we're talking, he asked me what it was I did. You know, I told him, well, you know, I'm a writer, but I also have a social media presence with YouTube, told him about the channel. Uh, he asked me the name of the channel. You know, this is, all, he laughed like everybody, oh, you're a YouTuber, ha, ha, ha. I know what you really do. Went through that, been through that here before. So he looks at my channel. He goes, oh, okay, homesteading off the grid. So I guess you talk about corn and peas. And I explained to him that that's kind of how the channel started out. Um, chickens and goats that never happened. That's another story. Uh, not that they never will, but they just didn't at the time. You know, fruit trees, horticulture, agriculture. I said some, but, but some very strange things started happening some time ago. So we got away from the corn and the beans, and uh, things kind of took like a cryptozoological slash paranormal slash haunted turn. And I kind of told him about some of the things we, we, we do here, some of the videos we make, some of the things we talk about. And I hit a common note when I got to the whole Bigfoot Sasquatch thing. Old habits die hard, and yes, please continue to get my six while I tell, tell this tale. So Dan says, so do you actually go out in the woods and look for these creatures, yada, yada? And I explained to him that, well, yeah, I mean, sometimes we do, but I kind of have my own, uh, my own methods where I actually look for them by not looking for them. And he said, what's that mean? And I said, well... You know, I will talk into the phone like I'm doing here while I'm, you know, either out here on the property behind my house or maybe up in the woods, up traversing the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, uh, just just in random areas. And I try to lure them in, sometimes with corny antics, sometimes uh, just sitting here and telling a story that has nothing to do with them. And people have, many people have commented in the comment section that they have seen him, her, it, or they creeping up behind us uh, in the videos, up in the treetops, various places. So some time passed after that third or fourth meeting with Dan, in which I finally explained what it was I, I did. And be, 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 between that time and the next time that we got together, I guess he actually went to my channel and he watched some of the videos. So we got back together and he had a very bold warning for me. He said, dude, you got to be careful because there are some lunatics out there. And I was like, dude, you're preaching to the choir. I know all about that. I know all about lunatics. I know all about degenerates. Been around the block. Um, had a, my experiences with a lot of people. And he goes, no, you don't understand. And that's when he told me his experience what he, to this date, now this guy's about 20 years older than me, uh, he, he, re, he recalls this as potentially, and yes, I do love that word, being the closest he ever came to death without really knowing it. And it was in regards to our friend, which may or may not live in the forest out here behind my home, Bigfoot Sasquatch. However, it didn't have anything to do with Bigfoot Sasquatch. It had to do with an avid believer of 
Bigfoot Sasquatch who claimed to have had an experience with Bigfoot Sasquatch. An experience that ruined his life, okay? What does that even mean, Crazy Lake? Why are you talking in circles and riddles again? Well, let me tell you the story. And here's where many of you will recognize the story. All right, so you guys remember radio stations and radio shows? Of course you do. 70% of our viewers here on this channel are, are older than me. So I know that's, that's, we don't have a lot of Gen Z ears. They tend to not be able to watch a video that's longer than 28 seconds long. So of course mine, as I'm told, go on forever. Many of you who claim not to even buy green bananas anymore because of your age have said that you're probably going to pass on to the afterlife before I even finish the stories in these videos. Well, sit tight, buckle up, grab a green banana, because this might be one of those stories. So, my friend informed me that about 20 years ago, been, been quite a while, he'd gotten in a little bit of trouble. He got a DUI. He was drinking and driving, he got caught, and he never, he never had a career, so to say, because he never really needed one. He was born into affluence, uh, he comes from a very wealthy family, very wealthy background, but he's very humble. You wouldn't know it if you met him, if he didn't tell you or somebody else didn't tell you because he was very down to earth. He wasn't, uh, he didn't brag about it. Seemed like a pretty ordinary guy. Nothing flashy about him, except uh, he just, he, he never did any sort of work because he had to. Throughout his life, he would do various different jobs or do, but none of it ever lasted because it kind of, once the newness of it wore off, he would quit and he had that luxury of being able to do so because he was a trust fund baby. But when he got popped for his DUI, uh, he didn't go to jail. It was a first offense and good news, it was his last offense. He hadn't had this happen to him again since, and this was 20 years ago. Uh, he had to do probate. He was put on probation for a year. During that year, he had to take random urinalysis tests, or at least he was subjected to it. I think he said he never actually even had to take one. But uh, he had to be gainfully employed as part of his probation. He said that was a part of it that sucked the most. Not that, again, he minded work because he's not lazy. He doesn't not work because he's lazy. He just never really stuck with the job long term because he never had to because he came for money. Well, he had an uncle, a rich uncle, you know, like I said, the whole family's wealthy, who actually owned a radio station. And the uncle said, hey, I'll help you out. You know, I screwed up when I was young. We all have a tendency to screw up from time to time. Work for me at the radio station. And that way I can sign off on your form you have to file and, and give you your paycheck stubs. He had to turn into his PO, probation officer, you know, once a month until this thing's done. And so that's what he ended up doing. And he didn't mind so much because, like myself, he liked to read. He would just put on the, the, the tape that played the same songs over and over. And he'd do a lot of reading while he was there. But there was one hours worth of a show that was interactive he did at night and it was in regard to Bigfoot Sasquatch it was a lot like that there's a very popular show uh that I think is still there what well, I can't even remember the name the name's slipping my mind right now um Bell Art Bell you know Art Bell show uh, and I've listened to that that's really interesting stuff on there sometimes it was like that it was for one hour a night and it was local it was around here you know, uh, here's the thing. And you're thinking, why would anybody own a radio station? There's no way that can make money. Well, that's part of the reason the guy owned a radio station. If you don't know anything about wealth and wealthy people, what I'll tell you is that a lot of them will intentionally own and operate non-profitable bit. No, no, they're not not for profit businesses. They're they're totally supposed to be making a profit. But there's no way they can. Like a radio station, in the day of the internet, who is going to pay advertising to radio stations, right? They intentionally own businesses that lose money so they can take those losses off against other gains in other areas, namely their trust funds. You know, uh, great, great granddaddy uh, founded Coca-Cola, whatever, back in 1918, or 
you know, great, great granddaddy invented the handle, an, an ergodynamic handle for the coffee mug and sold the patent to uh, Union Carbide or whatever. So now nobody for generation after generation will ever have to work. That's very common to find in my area. And a lot of these folks, because even though, you know, the money's just coming in when those stocks pay their quarterly dividends, they don't want to give half of it away to Uncle Sugar, you know, to redistribute to other folks who aren't, who didn't work hard enough to be born into those families by gosh, so why should they get their money? So they'll go out and open up a business to intentionally lose money. So that's why this guy's rich uncle had a money losing uh, radio station business. But it was able to give him that job so he could sit on the air at night for an hour and t field calls of people who claimed to have had experiences with Bigfoot Sasquatch. <clears throat> and he told me he heard everything. And the guy never believed or disbelieved either way in Bigfoot Sasquatch. He was completely agnostic, so to say, in, the, in regard to all things Bigfoot Sasquatch. He didn't care. He thought... Yeah, it's possible. But he also thought, yeah, it's possible that it's not real. He didn't care. He had to have a job to satisfy his probationary provisions, and that's what he did. So he told me, you know, one guy would call and claim that, you know, he had drained his swimming pool, you know, at the end of the summer, got all the water out of it, was going to do some repairs or whatever. Uh, and a Bigfoot Sasquatch got stuck in the pool the night before. It's like, I guess this big, this Bigfoot Sasquatch came swimming in his pool every night and it didn't realize he'd taken the water out of the pool. So when it jumped in the pool, it landed eight feet down there, broke its leg and couldn't get out. So the guy calls in, you know, what do I do? What do I do? And the, my friend was like, well, why don't you call the government to come get him? And the guy was like, are you serious? If the government knows that I know, they'll disappear me. This kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that he put up with. And the guy would entertain the calls. And I think he said that the next night, a couple of other Bigfoot Sasquatches came looking for the one that was stuck in the pool, got it out, so it got away. So yet again, another Bigfoot Sasquatch sighting without any proof, no evidence, because, you know, that Bigfoot Sasquatch was rescued by others. So it, this is where he told me, he was telling me this stuff. He said, this, this is why you have to be very careful with your YouTube channel. He says, I think a lot of people don't quite understand that, like myself, when I had that radio show, you really don't care one way or another. You kind of present the evidence and you, you know, let people make up their own minds. But he said, I went through your comment section and it looks like there's a lot of people who, honest to God, do believe in Bigfoot Sasquatch, who thinks you're making fun of them. And I said to Dan, whose name isn't Dan, I said, yeah, you think? I get that all the time. I said, I, and I know this guy's got a brain cell. He's pretty astute. So he gets it. He can watch my videos and he knows I really don't care one way or the other. Like he said, I present the evidence. Uh, there have been times we've made these videos in which the hair on the nape of my neck have stood up. N no time more than when... I miss things that happen in the videos and we'll get a couple dozen people give timestamps about where and what it was. And I go back and look and see how close I was to something that we can't explain. And yeah, I'm really giving credence to the video capture of 25 October, 2019 titled, he discovers the lair of Bigfoot Sasquatch and is told loud and clear. He is not welcome. That video, though it's never been featured by YouTube, it's never been put on the recommendation list, it's getting ready to cross over 1 million views. We've got videos that have way more views than that, but that is the most viewed video of any video we have that's never been featured by YouTube because of what happens in that video. Most of you have seen it. That video brought a lot of you to this channel. I'll go back and be like, what are these people seeing? I was just in the woods telling a story that day about how beautiful the leaves are in, in Virginia, here in the Blue Ridge Mountains in the fall. So I go and I look, and when I saw that thing and I realized how close I was to it, and then when I later realized it was where I put that trail camera that we never found because it was obviously taken by something, potentially, potentially that which we saw in that video, ugh. I get chills and goosebumps just thinking about it. So anyway, I told him, yeah, I know there's, I get, you know, I hate you. You're making fun of us who believe. I'm like, whatever. 
I'm like, I just pray for those people because they're obviously, they got issues. I pray for them and then I ban them, but I don't really care either way. I don't care any more or less about them than the people that come on and say, we love what you do. Uh, you're our favorite, you know, and I, I appreciate that. I really do. But you can't, when you're a content creator for social media, you can't become attached one way or the other, or you'll find that soon enough you won't be a content creator because you internalize it too much. You can't. Just like any other work, just like any other job, you've got to leave it at the office, you know? So he told me, though, he said, when I had that radio show, he said, I started getting phone calls. I guess this would have been the equivalency of a of a troll which I like to call vertically challenged individuals who live under bridges, because even though people like to come on here and be mean to me, you know, random people with fake profiles, the pictures out of a dog and their name is R23CPO. You suck, Crazy Lake. I hate you. And I hope something really bad happens to you and your family. I don't return that to R2C3POs. I'm not gonna call them a troll. I will simply refer to them as a vertically challenged individual who lives under a bridge. And I will ask the God of my understanding to please bring R2C3PO the same health, wealth, and prosperity that he or she has blessed, or it, or them, my family with, and then I summarily ban them, I leave it at that. And my buddy Dan was like, sometimes it's not that simple. He said, I started getting phone calls at that radio station from this guy harassing me about making fun of him because he believed in Bigfoot Sasquatch. The guy claimed he had had a run-in with Bigfoot Sasquatch. He had had an, an experience with Bigfoot Sasquatch that ruined his life. And he told me for the life of himself, and, and I... I can relate to him here. How does seeing Bigfoot Sasquatch ruin your life, right? He told me these people talked like they were highly decorated combat veterans who had had experiences in the Middle East or maybe in Vietnam in the previous war, World War II and the wars before that. And it just altered their lives forever. Like they wanted to sound like heroes. And I said, yeah, I know, I get that too. He said, you have no clue how close this guy came, Dan thinks, to killing him. I'm like, all right, Dan, you've got my attention because to my knowledge, at least, I don't think I've come that close. What exactly are you talking about? And here, to make a long story short, and I know what you're saying, you're saying too late, Crazy Lake. You know that green banana you told me to go get earlier? It's not just past yellow, it's now brown. I can't even eat it. You know, if my wife were still here, but she's already passed on, listen to one of your other stories, I'd have her make it into banana bread. It's gotten so overly ripe since you started this video. So it's too late to make a long story short. Will you please just get to the point? All right, so here's the point. This guy being that he was pretty well to do and didn't do anything he didn't want to because he had the luxury of affording that. He had a lawn crew that cut his grass. He didn't cut his own grass. Well, he noticed one of the guys on his lawn crew was like coming around his house when it wasn't time to mow the grass. He was like staking him out, stalking him. And he even thought he saw this guy's car in the parking lot of the radio station where he worked, he got off at like midnight. And yes, I do see that. If you're getting my six, I see it. Keep watching it and see if it moves again. Cause yes, I saw that also. Okay. So he got this gut instinct that it was that guy on the lawn crew who was calling him. The guy had actually gotten around to making threats and telling him that if he didn't stop making fun of people who believed in Bigfoot Sasquatch, that he was gonna, he was gonna kill him. He told him that. And my friend Dan on the phone said, I'll have you know all these conversations are recorded and you are being turned in and we do know what number you're calling from. But Dan said he was bluffing. This was 20 years ago. Uh, cell phones were a new thing. Uh, just They were just out. So he was kind of bluffing the guy, hoping to throw him off to buy himself enough time to kind of figure out 
how to get out of this, okay? So he did, the next night, he went onto the show and he gave an artificial apology. He had never made fun of people who believed in Bigfoot Sasquatch. He simply fielded the calls. He was completely agnostic about his belief one way or another. But again, there were people who were very sensitive who took it as if he were making fun of them. So he gave an apology of which he knew he didn't know. But he said, everybody in the listening area, I wanted you to know that there have been times I've come on here and I made fun of you and I want to apologize. I fully understand that some of you have had experiences with Bigfoot Sasquatch and those experiences have completely ruined your life. He said, I've never had an experience with Bigfoot Sasquatch. I've never had, you know, something like that completely ruin my life. So I'm sorry. He said the call stopped. And not only did the call stop, but the following week when his lawn crew came by to mow his grass, that guy wasn't there. And so he went to the crew's foreman, who was a friend of his, and he asked him, he goes, where's that new guy that's been coming around this summer? He goes, oh man, I had to let him go. He said, why'd you have to let him go? And he said, well, he lied on his job application. He said, oh, how so? Can you tell me? He says, well, yeah, I'll tell you. He says, I don't mind telling you. The guy lied to me. I, I don't have any reason to have to protect him. I, I don't feel like since he's a liar. He says, you know, I get my guy. I hire guys McDonald's won't hire. He says, most of these guys are just right fresh out of prison and they can't get jobs elsewhere. He says, I don't have a problem with that. And a lot of these guys, I've seen them come here. They work hard. They turn their lives around. And he told me, you know, or he told Dan, he had hired a guy about 10 years previous who ended up becoming one of his competitors by going off and starting his own lawn care company. Though he became a competitor, they remained friends and the guy was totally successful, making a lot of money. So he wasn't judging these guys, but he said, this guy that was coming around, staring at my, my friend Dan, creeping on him, following him to work, waiting in the parking lot, had just been released from a prison in Texas. He had done three years for malicious wounding. He had, had been convicted of assaulting his best friend, actually, and beating him so badly that he put him in a coma for three years. Guy's laid up in a hospital in a coma for three years. The, the guy finally was released from prison because the guy he had beaten, allegedly, and for which he was convicted, had come out of his coma. And when he told the story of what had happened that night, it coincided with the story that the guy had told in his defense that no one believed. That story was that the two of them were out camping somewhere in Texas, drinking heavily that night, got totally intoxicated, and were attacked by a Bigfoot Sasquatch. The one guy, the guy that ended up going to jail, got away. The other guy didn't. He was left for dead by a Bigfoot Sasquatch, allegedly, but he wasn't dead. He was in a coma. Well, nobody believed this guy's story, the guy that had gotten away. He refused to plea bargain and accept a plea deal because he wanted the world to hear his story about their incident with Bigfoot Sasquatch. And the judge didn't buy it, the jury didn't buy it, and he was sentenced to something like 20 years. But after three years and his buddy came out of the coma and he went, he was represented by the attorney the other guy had, they went to the judge and the guy told the story and the judge said, look, I don't know what's going on, but in a very low profile fashion, let the other guy out of prison on good behavior early. Well, the guy, it turns out, became obsessed with making sure the world understood that Bigfoot Sasquatch is real. These things are out there and they are ruining people's lives like they did his. Okay, almost killed his buddy. So he somehow got wind of Dan's radio station and traveled all the way from Texas to Virginia with the intentions of doing harm to Dan because he felt Dan was making fun of the folks who believed in Bigfoot Sasquatch. Dan told me he never, ever saw that guy again. He has no clue where he went, doesn't know where he went off to after he got fired from, you know, his job from lying on the application. He claimed he didn't have a criminal record, but he told me, <clears throat> he said, you need to be very careful because there are some unstable people out there who will kill because you don't believe the same way 
they believe. I like, I'm like, Dan, you're preaching to the choir, bro. I fought in Iraq. I'm a combat veteran. You know, I was in the fight in what we, those of us who were there, call the holy wars. People killing each other because they don't believe, you know, the same ideology as the other, you know, the other group over here believes. So you don't have to convince me. And he goes, yeah. He said, just proceed with caution uh, with, with what you're doing, with the videos you're making. And now to those of you for whom this story sounds familiar, that's because this story was kind of repackaged and written and presented uh, as one of the stories in Bigfoot Sasquatch Files, I think volume four, maybe volume three. I don't know. But if you're sitting there saying, oh my God, you mean those stories are based on, on reality? Yeah, they are. Uh, the reason this kind of came to mind today and the reason I'm up here telling this story today is because my wife and I over lunch were talking about a gaslighter that we, we know. You'll remember the story gaslighting in one of the Bigfoot Sasquatch files. That is based upon reality as well. They all are. And some of them, for some reason, this story came back to mind today. I think it's because I was doing what we call a troll purge. You know, a couple times a day, you got to go through the comments, you know, pray for and then summarily ban the vertically challenged individuals who live under bridges. Um, but there was one comment that had to be reported. Because if you threaten me and my family, we don't stand for that. 